Good evening. I'm Elisa Smallwood, and I welcome you to Atlanta First United Methodist Church for this Ash Wednesday service. Please join me now for a word of prayer. O oh God, our deliverer, you led your people of old through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide now the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we sing hymn 269, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. to Atlanta First United Methodist Church. I'm Jasmine Smothers. I'm the lead pastor here, and it's my joy and my honor to welcome you to worship this evening. Let us go to the prophet Joel as our scripture lesson this evening from Joel chapter 2, beginning in the first verse. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was of old, nor ever will be in ages to come. And in verse 12, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. 
Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. So blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priest who minister before the Lord Weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Watch, O God, your sons and daughters, where your cleansing waters flow. Number them among your people. Bless as Christ, bless long ago. Weave them garments bright and sparkling. Compass them with love and light. Feel, anoint them. Send your spirit, holy dove, and hearts delight we who bring them long for nurture by your milk may we be fed let us join your feast partaking cup of blessing living bread God, renew us, guide our footsteps, free from sin and all its snares. One with Christ in living, dying, by your Spirit, children names. Oh, how deep your holy wisdom unimagined all your ways. To your name be glory, honor, with our lives we worship, praise. We, your people, stand before you, water washed and spirit born by your grace. Our lives we offer. Recreate us, God, transform. Recreate us, God, transform. Recreate us, God, transform. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we're so grateful for the gift of this day. 
grateful that you bring us to this place to begin and mark the beginning of a holy Lent. The time in which we pause and step away from our busy lives, oh God, to encounter you afresh and anew. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. This is your servant's prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Three weeks ago today, I was standing on the side of a hill, standing in a cemetery in Augusta, Georgia, and watching my 20-something-year-old friend bury her father. I saw my own father in his own humanity stand there, dig dirt off the ground, and over that casket, he said, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From dust you came, yeah. and to dust you shall return. You see, Ash Wednesday is the day in the Christian calendar in which we are required to step back and remember that we are not God, that we are not even little G gods, that we are humans, that we are not superhumans, but that we are mere mortals who must encounter our mortality. We must remember that every breath is a gift from God, that every step is a gift from God, and that every opportunity we have to breathe and to live is an opportunity to encounter God afresh and anew. Blow the trumpet in Zion says the prophet Joel. He says, wake up, pay attention. This is not business as usual. Stop what you're doing. Stop dead in your tracks. And remember, it is I, the Lord, who has created you. Mm -hmm. I, the Lord. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. Recently, I've been reminded of my own mortality, my own mortal dust. Many of you will know that this is the first time that I've stood in this pulpit, well, the second time today, that I've stood in this pulpit in three weeks. I've literally spent the entire month of February fighting for every breath, every step, every moment of life. Mortality is a hard lesson to grapple with. It's a hard lesson to realize that you're not really in charge of anything at all. You're not really even in charge of the air you breathe. You don't get to breathe unless God says so. But painstakingly, day by day, hour by hour, Watching paint dry, kind of mortal encounter. See, 10, 14, 15 days in our world is a lifetime. It's a lifetime to be still and to struggle and to know that you know that you know that you're used to being in charge of some things and now you're not in charge of anything. You don't even get to decide whether you hold your head up or not. Sleep, no sleep. TV, no Netflix, too much noise, too much light. 
no people, pain, hurt, abandon, quiet, too quiet, too hard, too alone, too alive, and too dead. And every now and then the phone goes, ding, ding. <laughs> you okay over there? Yeah, I'm still here. And all I can see is my dad standing on the side of that cemetery hill, saying ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Joel says, let all who live in the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. It's close at hand. It's a day of darkness. Why keep fighting for darkness? Mm, mm. Why keep fighting when children are shot dead in their schools? Why keep fighting when everything is hard? Why keep moving and breathing and going and trying to do life if it just goes from dirt mm -hmm. to dirt? Mm -hmm. Too tired, too sick, too still. Even now, declares the Lord, even now, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of dirt, even in the midst of pain, even now, God invites us to see, to really see, not to see what we want to see, but to see the things that we really don't want to see, the things that we try to ignore, the things that make us uneasy about ourselves and others. Lent is about seeing the dirt. It's about making the ashes matter. We don't gather here tonight just because there was nothing else to do. We gather here tonight to be reminded, to see the dirt, to see the dust, mm -hmm. to see the ash, to deal with it, to sift through it, even when it hurts. This Lenten season, we're going to be exploring a sermon series called The Great Escape. And the Lenten season, Ash Wednesday, really invites us to escape from ourselves and escape from all the stuff that distracts us from God. It really invites us to take a step back and escape to God. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Escape to me with all your heart. Forget all the stuff that the world is telling you to do. Forget all the stuff that you need to check off your checklist. And pay attention to the God that created you from dust. Mm -hmm. Return to me with all your heart, the Lord says. With fasting and weeping and mourning. Give me your hearts. I don't want your clothes. I don't want your big displays. I don't want your going through the motions kind of stuff. But give me your hearts, says the Lord. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He relents from sending calamity. And then Joel reminds us, maybe, just maybe, in the midst of pushing aside all the stuff, in the midst of sitting in the dirt, in the midst of sitting in the pain, in the midst of focusing on God and God alone, maybe, just maybe, God will bless us. 
be still. Still dirt. Still ash. Still human. Still mortal. Still fragile. Still sinner. Still God's beloved. Be still. So that you will hear the trumpet blow in Zion and you will hear God calling for your attention and you will see that there is more to life than this because the greatest promise of them all is that Easter is indeed coming. Mm -hmm. But there's work to do on the way. Work to do. Escape to God. So that the people might not say, where is their God? Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to full participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance and as our mark of our mortal nature. I invite you all to come forward and kneel at the altar rail this evening as we give thanks over these ashes and move into the uh, imposition of ashes celebration. I'm gonna ask Elisa and Mary to join me up here and everybody else come to the altar rail at this time. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please join me in this prayer of confession and pardon. Bow your heads. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. 
the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Amen. Amen. Please return to your seat. As you return to your seats, pass the peace with your neighbor by saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will receive our offering tonight, giving back to God a portion of what God has given unto us. And as we receive this offering, we will also sing our final hymn, hymn number 382, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. now this benediction go forth from this place but not from the presence of God knowing that you know that you know that during these next 40 days you have the opportunity to encounter God afresh and anew so have thine own way Lord have thine own way thou art the potter we are the clay in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.